7,170 pounds. A Gulfstream rear kitchen super slide couples rig just came in on trade here at Haylet RV of Coldwater, Michigan. And I say with great confidence, I feel this RV is in better than new condition at a used RV price tag. That's a bold statement, but I'm prepared to back it up. So what I mean by better than new is the RV is very young in age. The folks, uh, you know, had an idea. Their concept of camping didn't quite pan out, so they just needed to swap it around for something else. That's the only reason it's here. Um, it's not that it didn't function well, it just didn't do the function they were seeking, you know? Um, kind of, it's hard to buy your second camper the first time if you've never really dove into this thing. But what I mean by better than new, it's cleaner than when it was built, that's for sure. I can't locate any sort of defects. I actually see little signatures where I think the previous owners uh, took care of a couple little factory craftsmanship items. And there's also things like the slide awnings were added and uh, a couple little odds and ends here and there. Uh, like the folks even touched up the, the frame. If there was any surface corrosion on the frame, previous owners went through and spot touched all that to get rid. I mean, it's just it's really impressive, the look and the condition of this thing. It still smells new, except clean, without that like chemical smell. Um, so, what is this uh, camper? What is a Gulfstream Supreme? Well, uh, it's a solid, I'd call it like mid-level. This is not their pure entry-level series, but it's certainly not at the equipment package of like a J Flight or a Cherokee or a Wildwood or a Catalina or something like that, you know? Those are, are brands that definitely have a trim level above this, but it does have some good features of its own. So let's start over here. This is a tri-fold sleeper sofa. This is a couple's camper, but if you do have some guests, whether they're adults or kids, you do have a nice place to put them down. Not put them down as in like, uh, you know, sleeping, not like, you know, I'm going to put them down. Never mind. You get the point. So over here are on the freestanding table. They have a pseudo atrium window setup that I really like. I think it's a nice piece of eye candy here. It just brings in a flood of light. The only problem with it is it's so much light, the camera has to make everything else look darker. The only reason I say pseudo atrium is because the windows don't actually go all the way down, but I think it's still close enough it qualifies because... Frankly, guys, do your ankles need a suntan? Not when you're sitting at your dinette, they don't. So I think this is good. You know, there's no gouges, there's no scratches, everything works, and all those windows open for airflow. We do have central air in the ceiling. There are not heat ducts in the flooring of this, nor does it have any sort of underbelly or insulation package. That is one of the reasons I call it mid-level versus more upscale like a J-Flight in that regard, because it, uh, you know, it's uh, not, not a cold camper, but most of the time, owners of an RV like this, you're going to be spring, summer, fall camping. So for that purpose, I think they nailed it. I also think if there's one thing they absolutely crushed in this camper, it's that this thing has an intense amount of storage. And that big time storage makes itself known really right here in the kitchen, as well as in the bed, bath, hallway. And we'll get to that in a minute. So, uh... All the cabinetry, it is um, stapled styles, but that's okay. You know, there's, th this is fine. J-Flight will do things like pocket screw their cabinets to make them a little bit longer lasting, but this is okay. There's, there's good and there's better, and this is in the good category. Kind of similar, and it still looks pretty, still very aesthetically pleasing, but they do have uh, a sticker wrap on their drawers versus like a plywood extension. But the fact is, there's nothing wrong with that. The countertops are T-molded versus a sealed edge. But again, it's okay. RVs have existed for over 50 years with those exact same counters, and they're fine. Now, a lot of times I'll begin my RV tours by showing the uh, camper all closed. I didn't really do that here, because when you close the slide on this, you pretty much cut yourself off from getting to the fridge and the kitchen. You can get to the bedroom and bathroom, but that's true of most RVs anyway. So um, the uh, the counter space here is excellent. I do like the level change. Some people don't. I do. And one of the reasons that that flips up and down is so that the slide doesn't crush it when it closes. Uh, you might notice, too, that like when we get down here, you can see that there's all kinds of little good nooks and crannies. I mean, you can go bonkers packing this sucker closed. And there's a space for a wastebasket behind those drawers. Plus, even under the oven, they just didn't waste anything. Um, as we spin around here, one of the things that's nice, and one of the reasons I love rear kitchens, is you get the same 
big mega window, big picture window that you get in a rear living room, but you get it looking at your campsite in a rear kitchen. I've always felt that rear kitchens were a superior destination model, although rear living rooms are probably a little bit better for traveling since all your storage is behind the axles and can bounce around a little more. I do like the lighter, brighter interior decor here. It's got a good look, good feel to it. Those are not any sort of recliner. They are just barrel rocking chairs, but they can turn and the TV turns. Traditional rear kitchens give you that 90 degree neck wrecker entertainment center, and they found a way here to overcome that. So it's it's really not, you know, not, not too bad. The electric space heater will be nice in a spring fall camping scenario where you want that little bit of extra heat without burning up all your propane. Now, just like the kitchen up here in this hallway to the bathroom area, this is just pure wardrobe space. This gives you like the, the clothing or personal or just extra dry pantry storage of like a, a, something maybe a little bit bigger, like a fifth wheel, but here in a half ton towable travel trailer. Another nice touch, a convenience thing is that there are switches for like every ceiling light, whether it's here in the hallway or if it's in the uh, the bedroom or whatnot. Now, over here in the bathroom, this is, I mean, like I said, if they nailed any one thing on this camper, it was storage. You know, the construction is okay. The uh, appointments are okay, but the functionality and the storage in this model is absolutely on point and ace. They did a great, great job there. So our uh, shower over here, we do have a nice standing corner shower as opposed to a uh, you know travel trailer tub. Um, the enter not entertainment <laughs> vanity being mounted on a uh, corner like this means that it's always it's very organic. It's very comfortable to use. You never feel like you're you're standing too close, too far from the wall, anything like that. And I like the way that that countertop overhangs a little bit. It gives you plenty of space for things like if you want to put a toilet paper stand over there or something like that. So um, moving on here up to the bedroom, there is a sliding pocket privacy door here. Bedroom is simple but effective. You have a split style of wardrobe. On the right side, you notice it started all the way at that side stand. On the left side, you see that you do have an open side stand. They kind of split the difference here. Uh, some people like it when the wardrobe goes all the way down so that there's not a sharp corner. Some people like it when it's open like this so you don't feel quite so claustrophobic. Well, they gave you one of each here so you can choose which side of the bed you want to sleep on. This is a short queen. There would be room to add a true queen and still scoot around it doing the travel trailer shuffle, as I like to say. And they did a thing here. And I, I don't know if I like it. I don't know if I don't like it. It's different. I think it's okay. At worst, you just don't use it if you don't like it. But they gave us an access door to the pass-through, which I thought was very unconventional. But what I thought about was this would be really handy to use for a laundry basket. You could throw a laundry basket right there, put all of yesterday's clothes in it, and then when you get home, open that one baggage door, grab all of the clothes from your camping trip, and then worry about unpacking and unsettling the camper, you know, tomorrow. So it's just chatting with the salesman that actually took this in on trade. I'm like, you know, this thing's late model. They put money into it. They added a slide awning. They added max air covers over the roof fence. Uh, why are they getting rid of this thing? And he said, they just, the guy always wanted a fifth wheel. And he swapped it into a big triple slide Cougar now that he had enough truck. It's the only reason it's here. So you folks at home, you're going you're gonna to do well here. Um, that passer we looked at in the bedroom a second ago. This is that was on the driver's side. We're on the passenger's camp side right now. But you can see that you got a good pass-through compartment here. And the little cutaway right there, you know, extra might be those extra three inches you need for a tote or something like that. Um, there, like I said inside, there is no uh, enclosure of the underbelly or anything like that. This is a spring, summer, fall camper. My assessment, I think that uh, if what you were looking for, like if you had a campsite that you just uh, you only use a couple times a year, or if you had something you just want to park for seasonal use, this this thing would get the job done. You know, I think that's I think that'd be a really good use for something like this. Uh, power tongue jack does the heavy lifting for you. All of our hookups are right here, just in front of the slide, including a uh, outside utility shower. The uh, slide awning is something that the previous owners added on there just to help reduce heat introduced into the camper as well as, uh, you know, reduce maintenance on the top of it. Uh, and again, max air covers on the bathroom, bedroom, and rear kitchen ceiling vents. 
Uh, there's no ladder, but it is a walkable roof, so you just need to remember to use a you know portable ladder effectively. Um, the other thing that I really like about this one is over here on the campsite, and I wish this nice looking Jayco Whitehawk just wasn't parked right next to it right now, but it is what it is. This thing has an awesome park friendly campsite. Um, so I mentioned the big window in the living room, but you know what I didn't mention were these two kitchen windows right here. Whether you're sitting in the chairs on the sofa at the dinette or in the kitchen, everybody's got really good visibility of this one. Power awning does have LED lighting and notice how it clears all these windows over here, these two big windows. So you've always got good uh, door side breeze potential. Kind of like previous owners added a bunch of things, they also added the larger entry handle here. And once again, we've got that big picture window right here on the campsite, but there's no like slides. There's nothing that's messing up our campsite. So if you've got your picnic table here under the awning next to those outside speakers and TV hookups, you've got it all right here under, way under the middle of that awning. So it's not like you got little rain spritzes on you. The tires are basically new like the rest of the camper. But like I said, the folks went through and even did little touch-ups. Like you can see how these jacks have, uh, they're, they're, it's more of a black matte paint you know they even went through and touched those up so that there's no like surface corrosion visible or anything like that a lot of personal care and attention went into this and i would guess that the folks had intentions of keeping this rv a lot longer than they did we just had too tempting of a deal on a big triple slide cougar fifth wheel here so good news is you folks are going to get a pretty nice late model barely used camper with some upgrades on a couple Probably close to $1,000 worth of add-ons on this thing, if I had to guess. So, give us a call. Hitching Pieces, Parts, Trades Finance, Truck and Trailer Package Deals, RV Delivery, and everything between. We do it all at Halet RV. So, take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone.